Before using a bench or pillar drill, ensure that you're wearing all the necessary PPE. This will be safety glasses, safety shoes and a buttoned up protective smock or overalls. Long hair should be tied up. Festival bands and dangling jewellery should be removed and all clothing tassels etc tucked safely away. This guide is only for the drilling machines located within the metal fabrication workshop and the multi-materials workshop on the second floor of the design school. The main control box is located on the left hand side of the machine. Facing the operator are two push button controls. The upper green button is to start the machine and the lower red button is to turn the machine off. To the side of the control box is a red emergency stop button. This is only to be used in emergencies and not as a routine method of stopping the machine. Once this button has been depressed, it needs to be twisted to release. The drill won't start while the emergency stop button is still depressed. To the front of the drill is a clear plastic guard. This must be closed before the drill can be switched on. The guard is fitted with an electronic interlock which disables the machine if it's not in the closed position. You must keep the guard closed until the drill chuck has completely stopped rotating. These drilling machines, sometimes known as drill presses, are fitted with keyless chucks. Chuck is the term for the part of the machine that holds the drill bit. Fitting a drill bit is a fairly simple procedure, but you'll need to use two hands. You must make sure the guard is open for this part, disabling the machine. Using one hand to hold the main knurled part of the chuck, offer the drill bit up into the chuck with your other hand. Twist the main knurled part of the chuck in an anti-clockwise direction until it starts to bite onto the drill bit. At this point, remove your hand from the drill bit and grab the knurled collar above the main part of the chuck and twist in a clockwise direction. One hand will now be twisting clockwise while the other is twisting anti-clockwise. This will tighten the jaws of the chuck onto the drill bit. Hand tight should be sufficient to hold the drill in place. At this point it's a good idea to start the drill rotating to check that the drill bit is fitted concentrically into the chuck. As it's spinning, any errors in the way the drill bit is fitted should be easy to spot. The drill spindle is lowered and raised with the hand feed wheel on the right hand side. This wheel is fitted with three handles and must be operated with the right hand even if the operator is left handed. Every metal component drilled must be either held in a drill vise or clamped to the drill bed. Any item to be drilled with a drill bit size over 6mm must be clamped down to the bed. If it's being held in a vise, then the vise must be clamped down. There are two basic types of drill vise within the metal fabrication workshop, those with shoulders and those without. Those without are generally bigger. Vices with shoulders are ideal for smaller components. They don't need a packer underneath the component if the component is sat up on the shoulders when the vise is tightened. Vices without shoulders always need a sacrificial packer beneath the material to be drilled. When drilling with a vise that's not clamped to the bed, keep the threaded bar of the vise towards the left of the drill and hold it with your left hand. This will give you something to hold on to whilst keeping your hands a safe distance from the cutting operation. To drill any hole into metal, the position of the hole must be centre punched. The drill bit will then be guided into the sloping edges of the centre punched impression. When freehand drilling, align the centre dot as closely as possible with the drill bit. Once you're happy with the position of the drill, raise the spindle again and then turn it on. Make sure you're holding the drill vise securely in your left hand by the threaded bar. Gently engage the drill bit into the centre dot. Once engaged, apply even but gentle pressure until the drill bit has cut the required hole through the metal. With the drill still spinning, wind the spindle up until the spindle has returned to its upper position and then turn off the drill. Once the drill has completely stopped rotating, the guard can be opened and the component can be retrieved from the drill vise. If you've completed all your operations on the drill, ensure that it's swept down and all waste material is removed for the next operator.